Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. I hope it's been a fabulous week for everyone. I hope that your dreams are coming true and um, and that your life is working and that your body is working and that all of the things that you wish for yourself are shaping up and lining up and just getting ready to present themselves to you. If that's true, then great, stick with us. We'll just inspire you to do more. And if it's not so true, stick with us. We'll inspire you, I hope, and, um, and, and lift you and make this a really good week. So stay with us. There's good stuff happening here. I'm um, Reverend Dr. Marlene Morris. Boy, that's a mouthful. But you can call me Marlene. Everyone does, and I've gotten used to that all of my life. And I welcome you to our um, our little spiritual session here. We're here on Sundays at noon and um, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And the whole purpose of being here is to inspire and uplift and empower and help you see what a magnificent person you really are so that you can put that to work in your life and create the life of your dreams. I believe that our dreams speak to us of the way it's meant to be in our lives, not holding out a, a carrot and saying, wouldn't this be nice here, chase this, but rather that um, our dreams and aspirations are the voice of spirit within us saying, come this way, come on, let's do this together. It'll be fun, it'll be great. We'll change our world, we'll change the world maybe even. Um, so we need to listen to that and follow that and not be sidetracked by appearances and by other people's opinions and by the way that it has been because the way that it has been is the way that it was. It's over. Let's start something new. And let's start it with uh, a belief in spirit and in the spirit within you and your ability to truly make your dreams come true. That's what we're all about here. And I welcome you to be here and uh, and to share the excitement and to change your life by changing your mind. That's what we're really all about. So welcome. Welcome. Um, I've got much to talk about this morning. But I think before I do that, I'd like to spend just a, a moment getting us kind of grounded and on the same page, if you don't mind. So let's begin with um, just a little centering something. Be with me. Close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. If, if not, then um, just soft focus for a minute. This is going to be very short. But I simply invite you to know that you have come to the right place at the right time to hear the right ideas, to, to be inspired by the right words, to change your life for the better. We know that where two or more are gathered right in the midst of all that is spirit. And, um, and what I know is that where two or more are gathered, that spiritual power is empowered and magnified and great things happen. So, here we are. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for being here with us. And here we go. Here we go. Good morning, Dana. How are you feeling? Let's take just a moment to check in with anybody that needs to be checked in with or would like to be checked in with. Good morning, Dana. How's, um, how's the rehabilitation going? Good afternoon, Brenda. <laughs> she caught me again. I have a tendency to say since it's been morning for the last several hours, it still is. Good noon. Good noon. I like that. Good noon. Pass me notes anytime. Works great. 
good noon. It's a way to jump off from my good morning and uh, get into afternoon, which is where, in fact, we are, at least here in California, we are. The East Coast has been well into afternoon for a while, and Hawaii's coming up behind us. So, good noon. <laughs> good day. Dana, check in with me, darling. How are you doing? How are you doing? And Brenda, my dear, how are you doing? Let's just kind of check in with people. Let me know how your life is going, how your body is healing, how, um, how prayer is working for you, and what we can support you in. So throughout the next hour, if you have a prayer request, um, feel free to put it into the chat box. Um, if you're new and kind of shy, you don't have to put your name on it. Um, or you can message me directly at, um, does that work with this? How does that work? Well, you can always send me an email at Marlene Morris at sbcglobal.net. And, um. I'll put you on my prayer list and support you in prayer. Good, Dana. Thank you for the update, sweetheart. Dancing with the pain. Interesting phrase. I would think you would be singing with it. Just a comment. Because I know you. Voila! <laughs> Yeah, the process is, is um, never as fast as we would like it to be, is it? Ever? Ever. Well, I'll keep you on my prayer list for sure, darling. For sure. And let's get you through this and out the other side and pain-free and moving well. Okay? Okay. So, where we are. Oh, it's been an interesting week, hasn't it? Hasn't it? The beginning of the week, we were praying for the situation in Israel, and um, that seems, at least for the time being, to be somewhat more peaceful. So we just need to pray that that peace lasts. Um... What else that is going on in the world would you like us to be praying for? Just feel free to put it in the chat box. Let me know. <coughs> if it's in the chat box, I'll be praying for it. Just know that. That's Your job is to keep me on my toes. And I love when you do that. And most of you do that very, very well. So, let me get to what it is I want to talk about today. Because I think it's kind of timely. Um, you can decide for yourself if it is. Um, so my question for the day, my question for the day for you, whenever you are listening to this, um, ooh, hold on, I've just got an update from Dana here. Surgery went perfectly and was shorter than expected, one and a half hours as opposed to three hour prediction. Yay! Well, you must be doing something right, sweetheart. You must be doing something right. So we're going to know that the recovery also is going to be less than expected time-wise. That uh, it's going to go very quickly. And, and my prayer kind of from the beginning has been that your doctors are going to be amazed by how quickly you heal. So keep dancing. All right? So on with with the talk, and we'll get back and we'll chat some more afterwards. Um, my question for you for today, I've decided I love questions, so I'm going to just plaster you with them. <laughs> my question for you today is, are you wearing your mask? Hmm? Are you? Uh. <laughs> Let's talk. So, I was reading this thing 
the other day, this thing. And it said that the 10 most significant quotations from 2020 have been revealed by the Yale Law School Library. The most significant quotations from 2020. Well, a lot of people were talking a lot in 2020, and a lot of people were getting taped talking um, because we were all on our computers, weren't we? So Fred Shapiro, an associate director at the law school um, library at Yale, compiles an annual list for the Yale Book of Quotations. The book is updated every year, and according to Mr. Shapiro, the quotations are often revealing of the times. No kidding. Since I find the 2020 quotes very revealing of the times we have been going through, I'd like to share with you the top 10 quotes of 2020. I knew you'd want to know. I wanted to know, so I assume you want to know. There's something Emerson Emersonian about all of that. So, the number 10 quote of 2020 is we are all Lakers today. It was Los Angeles Clippers coach Doc Rivers to reporters after the death of Kobe Bryant. We are all Lakers today. Boy, and we were, weren't we? So the number nine quote for 2020 is you're a lying dog-faced pony soldier. That's um, Mr. Biden in a remark to students at a campaign event in New Hampshire in February. A little background may be necessary here. In the February 2020 campaign event, the former vice president was asked by a college student about his poor performance during the Iowa caucuses. And he asked the student if she had ever been to a caucus, to which she replied, yes. No, you haven't, he responded. You're a lying dog-faced pony soldier. A reply that quickly went viral. Mm, it did, I remember. In a tweet, his campaign press secretary, Remy Yamamoto, explained the response was a joke and that it was met with laughter. It's from a John Wayne movie, and he's used it plenty of times before. And the students knew that. Number eight. The science should not stand in the way of this. That's White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany referring to school reopenings in a news briefing in July. During a White House press briefing, she said Mr. Trump had unmistakably said that he wants schools to open. This was in July. When he says open, she said, he means open and full, kids being able to attend each and every day at their school. The science should not stand in the way of this. That's the quote. Number seven. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or for Trump, then you ain't black. Again, Joe Biden, in an interview with the Breakfast Club radio program, he took some slack for that. But he went on to say that he never takes the black vote for granted. Number six, my most fervent wish is that I will not be replaced until a new president is installed. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg in a statement dictated to her granddaughter in September of 2020. That one just makes me sad. Number five. I will never lie to you. You have my word on that. White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany at her first press briefing in May of 2020. The number four most outstanding quote of 2020. I see the disinfectant that knocks it out in a minute. One minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or almost a cleaning? That would have been Mr. Trump in remarks at a coronavirus task force news briefing in April. We all heard that one. 
Number three, again, then President Trump. One day, it's like a miracle. It will just disappear. Referring to the coronavirus in February of 2020. The number two quote, I can't breathe. George Floyd to police officers in Minneapolis in May. And the number one quote of 2020, drum roll please. The number one quote of 2020 is Dr. Anthony Fauci, wear a mask. According to Yale, Yale Law School, wear a mask. Well, I can't say that I was surprised. There's certainly been a lot of talk about the wearing or not wearing of masks over the past 15 months. And it's, well, it's clearly not over yet. What does surprise me, maybe it's just me, is that in spite of the science, there are still those who will defend to the death their right to not wear a mask and subject themselves and others to the virus and its variants that have already killed 3,464,327 people worldwide as of 1746 Greenwich Mean Time yesterday afternoon. 3,464,327. For now, friends, even though I'm fully vaccinated, I'm keeping my mask on when I'm out in public, just in case. I wouldn't want to get it, I wouldn't want to share it. What strikes me as being ironic in all of this is that literally for centuries, great minds have been telling people to take their masks off, to reveal their true selves. Okay, so they were talking, of course, about a different kind of mask. Still, it strikes me as being interesting that in the past, we hid behind our masks, and it seems that now wearing one, or not, tells the world a good deal about us and what we believe. In Luke 12, verse 2, we find these words. There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, nothing hid that shall not be known. Of course, even with a mask, we can still see a person's eyes. And we've been told that the eyes are the mirror of the soul. St. Jerome took a slightly different point of view when he wrote that the face itself is the mirror of the mind, but that the eyes without speaking confess the secrets of the heart. Hmm. Ernest Holmes got in the, uh, into the act as well. He, he wrote that the mouth speaks from the heart. It is impossible, he wrote, for a man to conceal himself in every act, word, or gesture he stands revealed as he is, and not as he would have himself appear to be. From the universe, he wrote, nothing is or can be hidden. The very walls have ears. And the mirror of life cannot help reflecting back to us that which we really are. Hmm. It does seem, however, that we can do our level best to hide it at least from others. In Hamlet, we find the words, God has given you one face, and you make yourself another. I found myself wondering why. And then I found this, this quote by Marty Rubin, who wrote, behind every mask there is a face. And behind that, a story. And we all have our stories, don't we? 
And I believe we create our masks to hide who we believe we are based on our story. But we are not that. We are not our stories. The problem, of course, is if we keep telling them after a while, we believe them and believe that we are them, and then we don't see what we might be. If we would stop retelling our stories and take the masks off, and remember who we really are, then we might become what we might be. But we get all caught up in our stories, mostly negative. We get all caught up in what was done to us and by us or not done by us. And we start thinking that that's who we really are. Robert Schuller once said, negative thinking is subtle and deceptive. It wears many faces and hides behind the mask of excuses. It is important to strip away the mask and discover the real feeling underneath. Real feeling. And I don't mean the hurt or the victimness or the sense of betrayal. What I'm talking about is deeper than that, the real sense of who we are. Francis Thompson once wrote, the angels keep their ancient places, turn but a stone and start a wing. Tis ye, tis your estranged faces that miss the many splendored things. I came across this the other day. I'm told it's often read in AA meetings and I cannot help but believe that at some point in our lives at some time or another we have we have all felt the way the the poet felt when he wrote these words. Don't be fooled by me. Don't be fooled by the face I wear. For I wear a mask, a thousand masks, masks that I'm afraid to take off, and none of them is me. Pretending is an art that's second nature with me, but don't be fooled. Oh, for God's sake, don't be fooled. I give you the impression that I'm secure, that all is sunny and unruffled with me, within as well as without. Confidence is my name and coolness my game. That the water's calm and I'm in command and that I need no one. But don't believe me. My surface may seem smooth, but my surface is my mask. Ever varying and ever concealing. Beneath lies no complacence. Beneath lies confusion and fear and aloneness. But I hide this. I don't want anyone to know it. I panic at the thought of my weakness exposed. That's why I frantically create a mask to hide behind. A nonchalant, sophisticated facade to help me pretend, to shield me from the glance that knows. But such a glance is precisely my salvation, my only hope, and I know it. That is, if it's followed by acceptance, if it's followed by love. It's the only thing that can liberate me from myself, from my own self-built prison walls, from the barriers I so painstakingly erect. It's the only thing that will assure me of what I can't assure myself. 
that I'm really worth something. But I don't tell you this. I don't dare to. I'm afraid to. I'm afraid your glance will not be followed by acceptance. Will not be followed by love. I'm afraid you'll think less of me. That you'll laugh. And your laugh would kill me. I'm afraid that deep down I'm nothing. And that you will see this and reject me. So I play my game. My desperate pretending game with a facade of assurance without and a trembling child within. So begins the glittering but empty parade of masks and my life becomes a front. I idly chatter to you in the suave tones of surface talk. I tell you everything that's really nothing and nothing of what's everything, of what's crying within me. So when I'm going through my routine, do not be fooled by what I'm saying. Please listen carefully and try to hear what I'm not saying, what I'd like to be able to say, what for survival I need to say, but what I can't say. I don't like hiding. I don't like playing superficial, phony games. I want to stop playing them. And I want to be genuine and spontaneous in me. But you've got to help me. You've got to hold out your hand even when that's the last thing I seem to want. Only you can wipe away from my eyes the blank stare of the breathing dead. Only you can call me into aliveness each time you're kind and gentle and encouraging. Each time you try to understand because you really care, my heart begins to grow wings. Very small wings. Very feeble wings. But wings. With your power to touch me into feeling, you could breathe life into me. I want you to know that. I want you to know how important you are to me. How you can be a creator, an honest to God creator of the person that is me, if you choose to. You alone can break down the wall behind which I tremble. You alone can remove my mask. You alone can release me from my shadow world of panic, from my lonely prison, if you choose to. Please choose to. Do not pass me by. It will not be easy for you. A long conviction of worthlessness builds strong walls. The nearer you approach to me, the blinder I may strike back. It's irrational. But despite what the books say about man, often I am irrational. I fight against the very thing I cry out for. But I am told that love is stronger than strong walls. And in this lies my hope. Please try to beat down those walls with firm hands, but gentle hands. For a child is very sensitive. Who am I, you may wonder? I am someone you know very well. For I am every man you meet. And I am every woman you meet. The poem was called Please Hear What I'm Not Saying. It was, it was written by Charles C. Finn in September of 1966. I think it's beautiful. And I think it's real.
and I believe he had to take off all of those masks in order to write it. We all have had our experiences. And we all have our stories. Some stories are better than others. More dramatic. Some are worse. Some are uplifting and, and teachable. And some are self-defeating and damaging. But we all have them. We all have our stories. And we have all spent time retelling them. But, and here's the caveat. There's a point at which being caught up in our stories, hiding behind our masks, is self-defeating. It creates a world in which we cannot safely breathe or love or live. Pastor Rick Warren once said, Wearing a mask wears you out. The most exhausting activity is pretending to be what you know you are not. And we miss out on so much. Just beyond the mask, there is joy and love and, and wholeness and wonder and creation. They're just beyond the mask is the many splendored thing. The psalmist must have been in quite a mood when he wrote, Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? Even Job didn't go that far. So the point is this, God hides nothing. We ask for transparency. With God, all is revealed. I suppose the question should be not, why does God cast me aside? But why do I keep casting truth aside? The truth of you and who you really are, that truth will make you free. One hundred years BC, Lucretius wrote, when words of truth are drawn from the depths of our hearts, the mask is torn off. And reality remains. When words of truth are drawn from the depths of our hearts, the mask is torn off. And reality, the presence of spirit, is what remains. Cervantes has Don Quixote speaking of a face that is like a benediction, a blessing. And that is what your face reveals, a blessing, the truth, the beauty of you, the magic of a face is that it reveals. Let your face reveal to you what you need most to know. Let it reveal the real you. The you that is beautiful. The you that is unique. The you that is precious to God. The you that is 
important to the universe. Every week in one way or another I say divine ideas are perfect and you you are a divine idea. Whole and perfect and complete. When we begin to think that way, when we begin to think right, when we begin to live that way, we uncover the appearance of imperfection and reveal the perfect idea of you that has existed from all time in the mind of God. You know, I've lived in California all my life. California is noted for being all about glamour and makeup and special effects and a good deal of let's pretend. I've often said I'm going to write one more book. I'm going to call it Makeup, Medicine, and Miracles. I think I really must do that someday. I've said it often enough. What I want you to know, I think, is, is that here in this space, on Sundays at noon and Wednesdays at 7, it's okay to be who you really are. Here, we know who you are, and we see your world as it is. And I want you to know that everywhere I look, I see the face of God. I see faces saturated with divinity, minds immersed in a higher possibility and reality. Lives filled with unlimited possibility. Our vision here is to take this divine possibility and help you mold it into real world actuality in your life. Walt Whitman wrote, in the faces of men and women I see God. Scripture tells me, Behold thou my face forevermore. So I look into your face. And I behold the face of God. Take off your Be revealed. Well, here we are. I loved that poem. And I knew it was long, and yet every word was beautiful. I wanted, I wanted to share it with you. So thank you for allowing me the space to do that.
You know, Heidi, I'm reading. I'm reading what you wrote, and I and I agree on on one level. On on one level, I've found that when people are wearing masks, I have to look harder. You can still see the twinkle in someone's eye. There's a a thing that your nose does when you smile. Your cheeks move. Thank you, Don. You just have to look harder, but I think maybe that's a good lesson for us. To look harder. Most of you know that I have um, a few challenges with breathing. Um, nothing that isn't under control, and yet, um, my pulmonary guy, I like to think of him that way because he's just a sweetheart, um, he has told me that my lungs are like three quarters the size they should be, which explains a great deal. Um, when we first started wearing masks, I thought, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. It's hard to breathe. But you know, I've gotten used to it, and I've also looked harder. I have found that there are some masks that are easier to breathe with than others. And um, and now that I'm double vaccinated, I feel fairly safe going to the, the lighter weight masks so that I can breathe more easily. But I've gotten used to it. You know, was it inconvenient at first? Yes. Did I dislike it? Yes. Do I still take my mask off as fast as I can? Yes. Um, but it's saving my life and it may be saving the lives of others, so why would I not do that? Hmm? And if it makes me look harder, think harder, pay more attention, then that's a small price to pay. And if it saves my life or the life of someone I love or or even the life of a perfect stranger. That's a small price to pay. So of course being me, I now have a wardrobe full of masks. Colors, sizes, prints. Of course I do. <laughs> Those of you who know me know that of course I do. Makeup, medicine, and miracles. You notice which one comes first. And yet, they all count. So, there we are. There we are. Um, I was fascinated by the quotes of 2020. And I absolutely feel like they, they reveal the times. absolutely feel they reveal the times. It's like a chronology. In short, sound bites. And I love your poem. Because I think there are times when it fits us all. When we most need and we know it, what we are pushing away And yet it says that what we all most need is love, genuine love. Not just the words, but genuine love. Genuine care. All right. I'm supposed to be done at this stage with the preaching, so I'll quit. <laughs> Prayer requests, if there are any, um, that you would like to put into the chat box, please do that. We'll pray in just a minute. And um, what else did I want to say? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I think she's looking for music. I'm looking for music. Um, you wanted to do prayer. I'm going to do that in a minute. All right. And you wanted to thank everybody for coming and for their contributions. Thank you. 
I have a living notepad. <laughs> also want uh, feedback on this format that gets straight to the point. All of that is true. I hope you heard her. No, let me repeat just in case you didn't. Um, I changed the format just a little bit this morning. We opened with a very short, this just kind of grounding, centering meditation. And then pretty much went right into the talk after just a minute or so of chatting. And I'd like your opinion on how that went, how you feel about it. Um, I'd like to make a few other probably reasonably subtle changes, but that's kind of it. And um, I'd like your feedback on that. And I want to thank you for being here. I really do want to thank you for taking this hour out of your life to be here and hopefully uplift and inspire your life. That's why I keep showing up. That's why we're here. To uplift and support one another. To care about one another. And to reach out in prayer to make our lives better and make the world a better place. We have a closing song so I can pray now. <laughs> not posted yet though, yes? Or is this just me not being able to see the whole thing? Well, I want you to have your prayer somebody goes away and listens to the music. Okay, so don't I'll go away and listen to the music yet. Right, Stay put. post it when you are <coughs> complete. Fair enough. I'm going to take a sip of this. Oh, it's very pink today. How pretty is that? My nice, warm lemonade. Yes, Heidi is offering a first thought. I know. Yeah, could you give us a little bit more detail, Heidi, on on exactly what you mean by that? Because I know how brilliant your mind is, and I don't want to miss it. So if you would elucidate. I'm not sure that was appropriate. It just seemed right in the moment. Uh, and that having been said, Shall we pray? Hold on. Got hair in my eyes. There we go. Okay. Fill me in a little bit more. What might that look like, Heidi? Okay, I'm going to go ahead with the prayer. Because uh, I don't want to run out of time. And I just got to look at the clock. Uh, I think I got it. Assuming that I... <laughs> Thank you. You're probably articulating it very clearly. <laughs> I'm just not getting it. Um, I know you to be a very clear person. So, let's take a minute. And yes, please email me. <sighs> Breath. Exhaling anything unlikely. Exhaling any confusion or doubt. 
of fear. And I invite you to know with me that all that there is is God. All that there is is spirit, creation. All that there is is that which was in the beginning is now and ever. And it being all that there is, is all that we are. So we're not separate from it, not in any way. But we are, each of us, an expression of it. An individualized divine idea formulated in the mind of God and expressed in this time and this place in us. Spirit expressing. And being aware of that now, we understand that our words have power, our thoughts have power. That which we claim for ourselves becomes our reality. And so I know for each of us now that that which we most desire, that, that which we most aspire to, that is already ours. And is being formed even now, even as we speak, in the actuality of our lives. I know for Dana right now that means healing, strength, painlessness. I know that as her body knits and repairs, so too it silences the pain that drops away. And she is left feeling whole and perfect and complete. And I know she just astounds her doctors with the speed at which her body recovers because it knows who it is. It is awakened to its highest reality and response. And I know that this too is true for Brenda that her body is healing and strong and vital and energized. That it is awakened to the greater truth of its reality and responds accordingly. I know for Heidi, that her mind, her heart, her spirit easily sorts out those financial affairs in which she is involved. Easily, effortlessly, successfully. And at the end of it all, all is well. She is an abundant child of God. Period. And I know that each person within the sound of my voice, whether it is live here today or listen to it some other time, each person is touched by the reality 
the spiritual reality of their being. That the God within them is awakened and their awareness of that is acute. They are healed and whole. And their life is perfect and complete. The God within them responds just as surely as the God within the universe responds. And all is well. And I know as well that this ministry is guided and directed and inspired. And knows exactly what to do. To create its absolute success. That it may reach those who have been standing in the darkness and lift and inspire and empower And I am thankful for all of this and the more that simply comes of opening our lives to the realization of the presence of spirit. And our bodies and our lives and our finances and our romances and our business in the world is all inspired. And we give thanks for that. For the power of these words and success of our dreams, we are deeply grateful. For the realization of the presence of God in our life, we give thanks and let it be so. And so it is. And P.S. God fix Facebook so it does so it stops dropping Heidi. Thank you. <laughs> Back to your gardening, gardening, my friend. Make the world a more beautiful place. Do we have our closing song now? Yeah, it's posted there, but it got you know. Posted there. Can you see it? I can't see it. Okay, let me post it again. I post it all. We have to have a closing song. You can't see it, huh? Mm -mm. No, but I don't always see everything. I don't know why I don't always see everything, but I don't. <laughs> Heidi's headed for the sunshine. Ooh! Donna, okay. You're in the cheese dome. Consider it. I now can see the posting. Thank you. Okay. Signing off. See you Wednesday at 7. Same bat time, same bat channel. And, um, and again next Sunday at noon. I love you. Have a blessed, blessed week.